trying to break a little bit the rules of this very established uh, industry where every, everything has, is kind of created the same way. Um, trying to take, uh, create designs that well, we said from day one, a Moser, either you, in order for people to buy a Moser, either they have to love it or hate it. We need to create polarizing designs. If you create something that everybody likes, it's expensive products. Our products are expensive, so it has to create a strong emotion. And we were, I think, in the in the beginning, too kind of democratic, trying to please everybody. As soon as we started to be really clear about, let's make crazy watches that we like, that's made for us, then suddenly we saw people coming behind. So that was really, I like, think, a, um, a key milestone, being drastic, the way we removed the logo, we decided to create concept tiles, uh, really go to, to, to the edge. That's when really the, the brand took off. The more we polarized, the more we sell watches, to be honest, which in the beginning was not something we, we knew. To be honest, when we started launching products and we saw the first feedback you get is, is a lot the negative because it's easy to criticize behind a computer. So you take it very personal. I remember talking to Bertrand, it's like people hate this watch. And, and they were like, oh, oh yeah, there's a few comments that are negative. And you, 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 like, you start creating a lot of doubt and then suddenly sales come in and you're like, oh, not everybody hates this watch actually. And then we, we started seeing the correlation between more hate, more sales. So we, we, it kind of and pushed more, us to be even more provocative in a way. It was creating more hardcore defender as well. When you create people that hate you, you have people that love you even more. So they come and defend you even stronger. And we, we realized more we were creating those fight and discussion between people that love absolutely what you're doing and the people that don't understand what you are doing created those products were more successful than any other products. Um, so we, we started the discussion with, uh, with Ong Ban, that is uh, general manager of Sincere, that's it? CEO. CEO. The CEO of Sincere. CEO of Sincere, somebody that we know for many don't years. Don't demote him, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, don't tell him. Um, somebody we worked with for many, that we know for many, many years. Like I said earlier, somebody that believed in us uh, uh, 10 years ago when we started to work uh, with Sincere. And um, he approached us to create something special for the 70th anniversary. And he had already one thing in mind. He told us, I want the perpetual calendar. And my first, our first reaction was like, listen, it's complicated. We tend to not do a special perpetual calendar for one retailer only. It's a movement we don't produce enough per year. We don't have enough movements. Uh, but let's say he was very convincing, came back a few times, and we decided after a while, let's... Uh, 70... Did he tell you why he wanted a perpetual calendar? He was so insistent on it? Yes, of course, because for him, it's one of... It was probably the first iconic movement of the brand. So for him, um, wanting to create different iconic products for Sincere for the 70th anniversary, for Moser, he had, it, was, it had to be the perpetual calendar. So we decided to, um, to go ahead after, like I said, quite uh, some back and forth discussion on it, uh, but we had to do it special. And I think the, the strengths of the brand today, um, as Edouard mentioned, first of all, we try to design watches that we want to wear. So when we start to design a watch for a partner, it's something that we want to wear as well. But second, we always try to mix between this very traditional way of watchmaking. So if you look at our uh, perpetual calendar on the uh, Pioneer, uh, um, sincere Platinum Jubilee Edition. Um, it, it has this amazing craftsmanship, finishing on the movement, etc. Uh, but at the same time, we like to put modernity in, our, in the look of the watch. We would like to put the, this simplicity, this minimalistic approach um, that on the perpetual calendar is not often easy to do, uh, but that with our perpetual calendar we are capable to do. So second big part of the discussion was that we wanted to go on a concept but we wanted to use a way that we rarely use for the perpetual calendar in the past was to put the months and the date in windows usually we use it with a hand but to make it more special for this edition was to use two windows something we only did once in the past uh, five years ago uh, six years ago actually 2018 i think finally the most difficult part was the dial finding the right um, texture, but especially the right color. Uh, those enamel, as Edouard mentioned earlier, making enamel dial are extremely complex. 
and making a specific color is even harder. And it's not just any animal, it's a growth through and yeah. meltdown. And it yeah. takes and it's the first time it appears in a pioneer. It's the first time we have it in a pioneer with this hammered and enamel dial. First time we do a, a purple enamel as well. So many first time as well. And we love the color of this purple. I hope you will have the chance to see it in different color condition. What we love about those dials is that if you look at it in the sun or if you look at it in on the light, it will be two different dials, two different watches. And that's what is amazing about those. It can be a bit darker, a bit lighter, brighter. It changed a lot, a bit more burgundy, a bit more purple. The way we look at, uh, or the way I look at it when we, when we work on, the, on, on our watches, for, for first and foremost, we, we create watches for ourselves. That's number one. Number two, I think we're very, I wouldn't say knowledgeable, but we're really interested in what's happening around us in our industry and beyond this industry, and we take inspiration for all of that. And third, Moser, is anchored in tradition. So we always want to respect tradition. If you look at any of our watches, we try to create the bridge between that tradition and modernism and today. And that could be through innovation and creativity. I think we try always to mix a little bit the, the, the two together for us. It's one is not independent of the, of the other. And while certain brands will go into innovation with the lightest, the thinnest, the more complex, we try to push, um, really trying to think of design and function at the same time, and how can innovation contribute. I take the example of the moment we said one day we need a black dial. Moser is known for fumé dials, and we said, okay, if we make a fumé black dial, it's going to be just black, just be like everybody else. So how do we make it special? So we looked into. How do we make, if we want to make a, a black dial that is different to the other, then that's where innovation comes in, into the picture. We want to make the darkest material. We want the blackest. And then we looked at what are the technologies out there. And there was this technology that the NASA, well, had been developed for the NASA to, to do the coating inside the telescopes, which absorbs 99.98% of the light. It's made in a white room. It's nanotubes of carbon that are um, really in the nanomillimeters uh, of size very fragile system if you if you touch these are small uh, uh, tubes vertically aligned if you touch one it's like dominoes they fall little, the one on top of each other and this code technology is called Vanta Black and with, when I presented to my watchmaker said this is the biggest nightmare of any watchmaker we're never gonna work with them and that's where innovation is interesting in our industry is that they always push back the engineers and the watchmakers in the watch industry they always say it's impossible but they always manage to find a solution and today my team is so proud to master the, the Vanta Black and nobody else in our industry has managed to, uh, to, uh, to master it. And I invite you to go and, and check the, the Moser black dials. And if you have another black watch next to it, you will see how black this is. Because the light goes in and never get, goes out. And that's where we bring innovation. At the same time, yes, we try to, to find ways to bring innovation, but not to make our watches more complex. Innovation for us is how do we make it more user-friendly? How do we make it simpler? And that's always we say less, less is more. For Moser, it's really our, our philosophy. Sometimes people say less is Moser, and uh, I believe it really uh, summarizes a little bit our, our idea there. So we try to grasp innovation, not to make things more complicated, more avant-garde, but, but really to try to, um, to bring modernism to a very traditional Canva. Every watch is a Canva, we try to use modernism to create this, yeah, this mix of innovation and, and creativity. I think key for us is to stay independent. Um, now we, uh, we own 100% of Moser. It was a process, that's something we didn't discuss, but we, didn't, we were not owning 100% of Moser, but over the years we had the possibility to buy it back. And that's something that is very important to us. Um, it was always the dream of our father to, be, to own a brand. And, uh, and I think the fact that now it's ours, it's our jewel and that it's slowly growing, is, uh, is very interesting. We, see the, we think, because of what I said before, I think we are beginning of an amazing cycle for independent brands. This, that's where the creativity is. The number of watches produced are very, uh, are very limited. I think all together, if we put all the independent brands, we maybe make 10, 12,000 watches. And at the same time, the demand is exploding. So I think there's a huge potential for the future. We see the, the price is a secondary market uh, growing. And, um, and for us, we, we, yeah, we want to continue to grow slowly. As we, we said in the beginning, we are integrated. 
So it's not easy to double production. You need to find watchmakers, you need to buy machines, you need more space, you need ideas. That's something we spend a lot of time on. We don't want to make a lot of our watches. After two years, we kill them, we stop them. When people say, well, you know, it's, it's just like 200 pieces and you already stop it. But well, we have a lot of ideas for one. And second, we want to protect the value of our products. So yeah, we want to continue to grow. We will continue to grow. Um, I think there's a bright future for all independent brands. Maybe not, not all of them will survive, but I think the good ones, those, those who put the efforts into put, doing your things yourself, like owning the craftsmanship. And that's something we will continue to invest in. We are buying, we're investing in our supply chain. We're, we're acquiring so, certain of our suppliers because we believe we need to master the art, the craftsmanship in order to continue to move forward. And that's the future of Moser. Slowly grow quantities and more and more integrate the knowledge and master the knowledge.